this is one of the places where Western civilization came to the new world. Now, it's the place from which our civilization reaches out to other worlds. Midway between Jacksonville and Miami, Florida, lies America's spaceport, easily recognized by the jutting contours of Cape Kennedy and the Kennedy Space Center Reservation. Orlando and the Magic Kingdom of Disney World are one hour's drive to the west. At the Kennedy Space Center headquarters is the office of the center director, Dr. Kurt Debus directs operations at NASA's major launch base from this headquarters. Dr. Debus also supervised the planning for the unique launch facilities. To conduct America's space launches, the government acquired 88,000 acres of land on Merritt Island in Florida. Here, NASA built facilities for launching heavy space vehicles. As we designed the center facilities, we wanted to preserve the environment of the area. We suggested that a national wildlife refuge be established, which would also include the adjacent waterways. Before construction started, we negotiated an agreement with the state of Florida on these waterways. The agreement covers all of 88,000 acres of land on Merritt Island, as well as the Mosquito Lagoon, portions of the Banana River, and most part of the Indian River. Now we would like to take you on a tour of America's spaceport, so you may see something of this joint conservation effort. The south boundary of the Space Center is the Barge Canal, which provides fishermen, boaters, and commercial shipping access to the Banana River and Port Canaveral to the east, and the Indian River to the west. Much of the area is marshland, inhabited by ducks, coot, terns, fish, alligators, and other animal life. Bearing north, we pass producing citrus groves, with an occasional cluster of hives where bees store orange blossom honey. Causeways connect the mainland with Kennedy Space Center and with Cape Kennedy to the east. The buildings in the background make up the industrial area. The main access highway connects with the visitor information center, which hosts a million guests each year. Five miles further north, Kennedy Parkway passes the Vehicle Assembly Building. Two Apollo launch pads close to the ocean shoreline are in the background. Banana Creek, a meandering shallow waterway, flows westward from the pad area. Except for isolated launch facilities, much of this upper portion of Merritt Island is unoccupied and virtually untouched by construction. A short distance from the Saturn launch pads, is Playalinda Beach, open to the public except during critical launch operations. It is part of the narrow barrier beach, which separates shallow Mosquito Lagoon from the sea. Sea oats, marsh elder, sea purslane, and sand rush along the sand dune spine must be preserved, or the Atlantic Ocean would erode the frail barrier. Automobiles, which might crush and kill this vegetation, are regulated on the beach to preserve the barrier and thus protect the abundant wildlife within the lagoon. The intracoastal waterway, which channels through the lagoon, crosses to the Indian River through the Hallover Canal, which is a commercial and sport fishing center. Mullet and trout are the prime halls, and in certain seasons, crab, 
pompano and redfish or channel bass are caught. Just above Hallover, between the Kennedy Parkway and the lagoon, are citrus groves, where there have been found evidences of prehistoric cultures, which apparently thrived on the readily available abundance. NASA has granted administrative responsibility for management of this wildlife domain to the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. The field staff at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge is headed by refuge manager, Hal O'Connor. We manage on a concept of multiple use. Within the refuge boundaries, NASA carries on its space launch activities, and we provide opportunities for the public to study and observe wildlife in its own environment. Opportunities are also provided for commercial and sport fishing, duck hunting, boating, and swimming at Playa Linda Beach. We also manage over 3,000 acres of citrus groves and apiaries, which predate the establishment of the refuge. You see, our primary interest is in preserving an environment in which a wide variety of birds, land animals, and marine life has thrived for thousands of years. In a proper concern for the environment, there is an obligation to do everything possible to maintain the delicate natural balances which perpetuate these animal life cycles. <laughs> Each December, the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge is host to the annual bird count, sponsored by the Florida Audubon Society. Stationed at several widely separated observation sites, 12 separate teams spend the day identifying and keeping a record of every species they see. Of 335 National Wildlife Refuges in the United States, the Merritt Island Refuge was established as number one for the number of species sighted. The counting teams logged a total of 165 different species during the last count, compared to 151 tallied the previous year. Some of the birds are rare or endangered species. The sweet song of the dusky seaside sparrow is heard only in a small area of East Central Florida. Every effort is being made to protect the nesting sites and encourage greater reproduction of the dusky seaside sparrow. Common brown pelican is gradually disappearing from the west coast of the United States as well as the west coast of Florida. Naturalists ascribe this decline to the presence of the insecticide DDT in their all fish diet. In the pelican, it forms a compound known as DDE, which makes the eggshell so thin that few chicks survive. With less pesticide drainage in this area, there's hope that the local colony will continue to flourish. Approximately 20 nests of the American bald eagle are located on the refuge. This national symbol, also an endangered species, which ranges across the nation, is returning to and raising its young in increasing numbers at the Merritt Island Refuge.
mottled duck is the only type of duck which makes its home here the year round. But up to 23 other varieties of ducks visit the center during the migration periods. These range from the American widgeons, ring-neck duck, and scop, to pintails and blue-winged teal. Often they peacefully share the waters of the refuge with the white ibis, glossy ibis, the common or American egret, the snowy egret, the little blue heron, and green heron, the Louisiana, and others of the heron family. Occasionally, the American bittern is seen. The anhinga, or water turkey, is another large bird commonly found in the refuge. A colony of white pelicans may be seen resting undisturbed, while black skimmers zip across the water surface in a search for food. From time to time, the observer may spot a turkey vulture getting ready for another scavenging mission, or a red-tailed hawk in a soaring quest for dinner while a sparrowhawk rests as he digests his meal. The U.S. fish and wildlife biologists take an active interest in all their guests. Mother duck usually pretends she is injured to distract intruders from the nest. But these friendly humans only wish to confirm that all is well with the family. These regular observation efforts are part of a continuing study by the refuge staff of the mottled duck and their breeding and nesting habits. Duck hunting is allowed during the limited winter season when the refuge becomes home for thousands of migrating ducks. Permits for use of 25 duck blinds are eagerly sought and their use is controlled by refuge personnel. Some of America's astronauts, too, have participated in this exciting recreation. While the spaceport is gaining a reputation as a bird sanctuary, it is also a refuge for a variety of animals. Florida is well known for its alligators, and the Merritt Island Refuge harbors some. The refuge manager estimates a population of more than 2,500 alligators, large and small, within the refuge boundaries. The homely sea cow, or manatee, is a frequent resident. Her elephant gray hide and undistinguished profile would win no beauty prizes. But her gentle manners and vegetarian appetite make her and her family welcome visitors. One of the largest ground animals is the feral hog, descended from domestic varieties. These unconfined pigs thrive in the semi-tropical woods and swamps surrounding the launch sites at Kennedy Space Center. Raccoons with their distinctive masks are spotted from time to time dashing for the protection of the underbrush. The potential threat of rattlesnakes, water moccasins, and other poisonous reptiles keep pedestrians close to the established trails. To acquaint the conservation-minded with the spaceport wildlife, special tours are conducted by members of the refuge staff. Those who wish to learn and those who wish to observe are always welcome.
There are no public campgrounds within the 140,000 acres. However, an excellent campsite at Dummett Cove is available to conservation-oriented youth groups with supervision. Located on the Indian River shore, the site is the former homestead of a pioneer orange grove developer. Eastward, on the ocean at the southern end of the narrow barrier, is Playalinda Beach. This water playground is open the year round, except during launch activities, under management of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The broad waters of the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge teem with a variety of fish. Among them are the vegetarian mullet and the sea trout or spotted weakfish, which make up most of the catches. In summer, crabs are most active and seem to be an endless supply. Both sport and commercial fishermen take redfish and the gourmet favorite pompano. A small panfish called spots is also popular. Evidence that early Indians also found this area a rich source of food is shown by approximately 10 Indian mounds on the refuge. Some of them are burial mounds. Others are known as middens, which are discarded piles of oyster shells, bones, and broken crockery. Archaeologists date this material as originating between 100 and 800 A.D. Old Fort Anne, set up in the 1830s to protect the Hallover Canal from Indian attack, is represented by earthen breastworks. Evidence that sugar cane was once harvested on the present refuge is confirmed by remnants of a sugar mill established in the 1700s. Despite the intrusion of man from prehistoric times into the space age, the Merritt Island refuge remains largely undeveloped, a near paradise for wildlife. Space workers are conscious of these lower forms of living beings and respectful of the rights staked hundreds of years ago. As guests in another's house, those whose missions are in space show consideration toward their hosts. Among those who launch vehicles into space, this consciousness of the wildlife resource leads to a natural biological mechanical parallel. The Apollo, freed from the embracing cocoon of the mobile service structure, becomes a true creature of the sky. This is the child of science and engineering. Gestated in the giant vehicle assembly building, 
with workers constructing its entire life system, including its several senses. It's easy to understand the tenderness with which they view their vulnerable creation. As the bright flame points the way to man's future, so the dark marshes point back to the beginnings of life. Evidences of the evolutionary processes from prehistory to the present may be observed among NASA's wildlife neighbors who share the spaceport so compatibly.